Hi everyone. Thank you so much for coming to our talk today and then of course listening to us. Well, we'll hope you stay all the way because we've got some really interesting topic uh, to cover today. And that is how we built an automated recruitment system using uh, some of AWS services. So a serverless application as well as machine learning. And before we start, I just want to introduce myself a little bit. Um, my name is Gino and I'm a senior consultant at Servian and I'm an all around solution provider. So I provide a lot of solution for the client um, and I specialize around machine learning and, and data architecture. And some of you may see me around Melbourne as well or sometime globally because I, I love to compete in hackathons. So I've done a lot of those and I'll just pass it over to, to Perth like, to get him to introduce himself as well. Yeah, awesome. My name is Perth and I love solving problems for clients. And now I'm working at Servian as the consultant slash software engineer slash data engineer and also uh, writing blogs on my part-time. And you can see me many times on Medium and also on many other blogs. For example, like towards data science. And the last thing about me is I am not, I didn't come from Perth. It's really good to know. <laughs> so before we get started, I just want to give you a little bit of brief introduction about what we're going to talk about today and basically going to go through uh, what this thing is all about. So um, starting from the start, like how, how important it is to hire the right candidate as well as the current recruitment process at the moment in, in many companies out there, including the ones that serve in as well. And some of the challenges with the recruitment and how we built RecruitMate to kind of solve some of those challenges. And of course, we'll go through the, the most interesting stuff out of all, which is the actual architectural designs, so all the AWS services that we use. And lastly, any key takeaways at the very end. So let's get started. So we go through this phase in a growing company or in any company where we, we hire candidates. And of course, some of the, some of the candidates that we hire um, have to fit within a certain criteria. So that's why it's very important to hire the right candidate. And some of the criteria include how the candidate fits within the company. So for any company out there, just not only uh, a particular corporate company, but can also be a startup or consultancy or anything like that. So does the candidate fit within the company's culture? And that culture, as said, could be a startup culture, could be a corporate culture, could be a consultancy culture. And uh, would the candidate take partakes in growth and is also uh, like-minded as well? Fitting within a team is also a very important aspect in hiring the right candidate. And that is, is a candidate, a team player, collaborative, uh, works well with others and, and takes part in leaderships and, and, and is flexible with, with the tasks on hand. And of course, lastly, one of the most important aspects is, does the candidate fit within the job? So do they have the skill set to do the job? Can they learn new concepts? And we all know technology evolves every single day. We get new AWS updates every day. We get new text every day. So can we, the candidate learn new concepts and also solution oriented? So uh, thinking about the outcome at the very end um, and then of course the progress along the way. Um, so these are, the, I believe, one of the important uh, aspects of hiring the right candidate or how we detect the right candidate. And yeah. I'll just get Perth to go through the traditional recruitment process. All right, thank you. Yeah, th that is very interesting to know about the importance of the hiring a good candidate. And now let's talk about how the most companies doing the recruitment process. The first one is the announcement slash reach out. So this is when the company start to uh, announce for their job opening job position in the platform such as LinkedIn or Seek. And then after that, there will be a lot of candidates submitting applications. So in this step, then candidates will submit the application into the platform. And then the recruiter will come in and then choose, pick up the, the outstanding applications from the application pool. And then they will do the phone call. So recruiter will uh, call the candidates and then pre-screen them. And after that, if the, everything goes well, then they will send the job related test. So the, the candidate will receive the, for example, SQL test or Python test, depending on the position. And then if everything goes well again, then they will go for the, they will get invited for the HR interview. So in, in this interview, they will have the chance to talk to the recruiter in face-to-face -face interview to see if the culture is fit or not. And then after that, we have the technical interview. So in this round, we will 
uh, the candidate will get to talk to the people who is expert in different fields that he's applying for. So uh, the company can know that how depth is the knowledge. And after that, then the recruiter will collect all the feedback from the technical interviewer, from HR interviewer, and also like from the resume and also phone call. And at the end, if everything went well, then the candidate will receive the offer. However, there are, you can see that there are a lot of challenges in the recruitment because the process is very long and very time consuming. So the first one is that we can see the generic, uh, the recruiter usually use the very generic messages. For example, like if you open your LinkedIn message, you will get a lot, I'll receive like many different messages every day. And then it looks pretty generic. And the statistic shows that only 10% of the candidates respond to those issue, uh, those messages. And the company spent a lot of time meeting candidates that lack of foundational knowledge. So there's a lot of time as the interviewer that they will see someone that the resume looks so nice, but then in reality, when they test like basic SQL knowledge, then it seems pretty weird that how can they like get past in that round? And the last one is the, the limited time of the recruiter because everyone has 24 hours in the day. So it would take too much time for them to analyze all the relevant information from different uh, applicants. So yeah, all the three most cha big challenges in the recruitment process. So what we built is a solution that we call RecruitMate. It's our recruitment mate. Uh, it's a pretty much a personalized candidate pre screening platform and we'll, we'll go through the demo shortly as well. And uh, basically what recruitment is, is, is that it helps it with the current re recruitment process. So um, as you can already see that the current re recruitment process uh, includes the basic stuff that um, the perf has spoke about uh, initially. So it still contains the offer, technical interview, HR interview and phone, phone call. But what recruitment does is it takes away some of those parts and it brings forward what we call a smart candidate search, a resume analysis and automated video interview. And this is pretty much to help uh, with some of those challenges as well as help streamline more of the recruitment process. Um, so, so we would like to show you the demo now. So please pray with us and hope that the demo God is with us because we are doing this live on our side. So let's see how it all goes. <laughs> All right, so what we have here is the dashboard uh, to the application on our, on our application RecruitMate. And you can see here that there are a bunch of different tabs uh, as well. So the recruit tool, the resume analysis, uh, video interview, and of course the last one with the decision. Um, in each of these dashboard, uh, there are tracking progress for each of the application as well. So you can see that there's two people in a video interview and, and last one is the decision. Um, uh, making process. So um, let's go back to a recruit tool. Uh, and if, let's say, for example, uh, I'm trying to apply for a job and I'm, I'm also on the other end, well, Perf is on the other end, uh, assisting with trying to put myself in the application. So we can go ahead and open up the recruit tool. And this allows you to search for the candidate. So what it does is when you type a person's name, uh, for example, so I can look for myself, um, Juno Yama, or I can pretty much type data engineer or whatever as well, and search that particular location which filters it. And then I start the search. Um, and then you'll be able to see that uh, my name comes up. So uh, we, we kind of filter it so, for a little bit. Uh, so you can see that the, what this does, it, it actually uh, scrapes data from LinkedIn and it makes a call against uh, myself and then I can put myself into uh, the application process. So let's say I'm a recruiter and I want to passively approach someone to try to get them to join that awesome company uh, to work with us. So I look for a particular person with cloud experience, I add them to the list and then uh, I can start using this straight away uh, into approaching this particular applicant or particular potential candidate. So I can pretty much uh, click on myself and view more information about myself as well. And you can see that the first thing that comes up is of course my LinkedIn. That is me in the photo about four or five years back. Um, and then of course the current highlight as well. So 
uh, where I'm from, my current role, the current company I'm working at, and uh, you know, number certifications and things like that. And um, now what Perth spoke about before is that a lot of the messages are very generic. And we, as a, as a potential or passive candidate, you don't feel uh, personalized enough or you don't feel like this person has reached out to me because they see something in me. But, um, it's more about, oh, it's just another recruiter trying to approach me. Um, so what, what, what RecruitMate does, it actually uses, uh, it actually generates your uh, messages to that particular candidate in a more personalized way um, by reading the stuff from your LinkedIn and we may maintain a particular uh, uh, binary classification of if we should use this type of message or this type of message and things like that. So let's say I'm approaching this person for a, a AWS cloud architect, um, kind of a cloud engineer role. So it personalized based on, on um, your profiles and things. So we kind of can uh, generate this using machine learning process in the back end. So it has that capability as well. Uh, also, hiring the right candidate is important in a way where we like candidates or candidates should be able to be interested in what they do because interest also correlates with uh, their ability to learn new things or enjoy learning new things so we connect them to social platforms so for example we use twitter because it's one of the most uh, available streaming services a so, uh, social services that allows you to uh, get apis easily so um, for example uh, this can this particular person uh, myself uh, some posts and stuff about twitter on Twitter about AWS Lambda and all these things. So he uses uh, comprehend in the background to pick up messages that relates to technology that you're interested in. In this case, yeah, I kind of made sure that it's related to AWS. And the other thing is um, it uses recognition in the background to authenticate between your LinkedIn image and your Twitter image because you have multiple accounts or there could be someone who has a similar name, so a Sam Smith with another Sam Smith on Twitter as well. So um, I'm a bit lucky. Gino Yamo is a bit unique, so it was really easy to find myself, but uh, it does use my LinkedIn and my Twitter profile to validate that the two people are the same. Uh, again, using recognition in the back end. Uh, we can go into resume analysis. So after this candidate submits a resume, uh, the resume pops up, so you can see my resume there uh, using Word Cloud. Uh, we'll be able to get some information from that. And not only that, but uh, building a corpus of the right resume or the right candidate, we can kind of build more like an analysis as well. So how much this candidate fits within a certain criteria, you can kind of build this, we kind of build it so that uh, we have a corpus of some of our Serbian consultants uh, who have made it pass uh, with the final round and where we've received an offer and which offer they received data engineer, software engineer, anything like that. So building a corpus of, of texts and in a way, um, in, uh, potentially using topic modeling in the background here. And after this candidate goes through, uh, candidate may be invited to a video interview process. So this is just to uh, help in a way with some of those technical concepts and to identify candidates who who meet or fit within the actual job itself. So if they lack foundation knowledge or, or if they have really good foundation knowledge or anything like that. So more like a video interview to very start for a pre-screening process. So we can send them a particular video interview format. So for me, Cloud Data Engineer can just send that to me and send it to myself. <laughs> um, and then after the candidate, the candidate can see that there is, uh, they click onto this and they see this platform where they can start recording themselves and, and the answers come on the side. Unfortunately, we cannot record a video because we are currently using the video at the moment. Uh, and so it doesn't, uh, the computer doesn't allow us to do that. Um, but uh, pretty much the question comes on the side and the candidate asks, answers question based on those. And then again, this information does get extracted into a text form of course, using something like transcribe in the background. Uh, and then that can be used to, with Comprehend to, for some NLP process to build some topics from the candidate to see if they fit within a job or not. Um, so going back to the dashboard itself, what we also have is uh, the conversation log. Again, just a little bit of an audit process um, and this is just a video that I pre-recorded earlier just for the fact where we can't show two videos at the same time. So that's me answering questions to uh, Akriti. And I think uh, there's a message that pops up on the side that asks uh, various questions like, what is a data engineer? Um, what is a data warehouse and things like that. Uh, so going to the conversation log, uh, what we have is we capture 
um, information about either pre the conversation that you've had uh, with the talent acquisition team as well as with the candidate itself. So you can see this is the only conversation that we've had because we just sent the message just then. And lastly, making a decision. So if you have with this candidate, you can click through and then send this to the talent team. So it can be someone who is in a more senior position within the talent team or the hiring manager to have them review and be like, okay, we're good to go. And then we can invite this candidate to come and to meet us in person. And of course, um, meet some of our technical people to get to know the candidate even more on, on a more um, job-based uh, search. And of course, we can also remove the candidate. And so that's, this is pretty much, um, this is pretty much it. And this is what we built uh, for Servian. And just to put it out there, we built this product here in approximately two days. Uh, we built it for a hackathon that we worked on together uh, for Servian. And, and this is something that we believe that would help uh, with not only uh, Servian itself, but also a lot of other companies out there who are um, struggling with some of those tedious recruitment process or, or, or reaching out to candidates. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. I think the demo worked fine. I think, I think the demo girl was with us on that one there. Don't you think, Perth? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> works better than I expected. <laughs> awesome. Okay, let's come back to the slide. Awesome. Thank you so much, Gino, for the demo. And now we will go into the architecture behind this application. So the first one, when the users come into our application, they will meet with our front end. And then we also have the back end built using Amazon Web Services. And how we connect between the front end and back end is that we use the AWS service call, AWS API gateway, which is act as the middleman between these two. And let's talk about the front end architecture first. So the front end is made by using Vue.js too, which is used for the animation and different transition between different pages. And now we also have the Bootstrap 4. Bootstrap 4 is very helpful for us to build the layout of each page. And also we use the service called Pipe. So Pipe is the video recorder that we use for the candidate to record themselves. And we also have other API that we use in this as well. And now let's talk about the backend part. We have different AWS machine learning services that we use. And Gino will talk into details of uh, all of this later. So we have recognition, we have transcribe, we have text rack, and we have comprehend. And here are the whole picture, the overview of our backend architecture. So we build all of this by uh, Amazon Web Services. And you can see that when the user come into our system, they come to the API gateway. And there are different smaller systems, which, which uh, Gino into, go, will go into details after this. So the first one is the Smart Candidate Search, which is the LinkedIn Scraper. And the next one is the Resume Analysis. The third one is the Live Twitter de Delivery. And at the bottom, you can see that we have the small system called Authorized Twitter and also Automated Video Interview Analysis. Awesome, thanks for that, going through the overview, Perth. Uh, as Perth mentioned, uh, this is, uh, we have many different systems and this is one of them. So th the first one is LinkedIn profile extraction. And of course, in this itself is Twitter validation. Uh, so we have Lambda, which will make a call to a service called a Phantom Buster. Uh, so this Phantom Buster, what that acts as a little bit of middleman for us to talk to LinkedIn and extract information and bring it out uh, into a nice adjacent uh, format, including all the relevant information that we require. Uh, everything is stored, the keys itself is stored in KMS. And Lambda then takes this information and pushes that to DynamoDB uh, in, in the correct format, and as well as pushes the images into S3. Uh, once the images land to S3, it makes a call, it makes an event trigger to a Lambda, another Lambda, which makes an API call to Twitter and goes, hey, I've got this person coming in, uh, find me all the profile with this person. And it tries to match the two profiles together um, using recognition. So it takes the images from the LinkedIn, takes the images from Twitter and tries to match them just in case there's more than one person with the same name. Uh, once it matches, then it goes ahead and authorizes that and then updates uh, DynamoDB afterwards. Um, what we've found is that DynamoDB, you haven't used DynamoDB uh, before, it's a NoSQL database, very simple to use, very developer friendly. Uh, NoSQL, no schema, you're good to go. Uh, the next thing is recognition. So recognition is a very easy to use API. You make calls uh, using 
uh, recognition API. And then of course that gives you the information that you require back in our case, it was detecting uh, the, two, the two faces to see if they matches. You can use it for other things as well. For example, detecting objects uh, and detecting other various things. And of course you'll hear me say uh, this pretty often, um, but uh, cost does grow with the number of scans. So it, it is a service that is, is running without a server or anything like that. And nothing that, not much that you have to do to it as well to train or anything like that. Um, so it, it's very simple to use. And, and um, the next thing we have here is the Twitter listener. Uh, the Twitter listener is essentially a, a Python script that sits on EC2 and that just makes uh, calls to Twitter. So it listens for particular profiles. So in, in that case, it was myself. Uh, when when uh, the candidate pushes uh, or, or writes Twitter messages or anything like that, it does pick those messages up straight away and push them into uh, Kinesis Firehose with a little bit of buffer, um, loads that into uh, uh, push that S3, which also again has a Lambda eventually got on it, which makes a call to comprehend just to make sure that we only display uh, the messages that, you, that you're looking for or that the talent acquisition team is looking for. So we don't care if the candidate says, I love dogs, I love cats, anything like that. We, we care more about if they're talking about uh, any uh, technologies or anything like I love AWS or uh, Lambda is the best or S3 is, is the hard drive on the cloud. Not exactly. <laughs> um, and it pushes the data into DynamoDB as well. <laughs> that was a joke, by the way. Um, uh, yeah, so Comprehend is an NLP service and it, it does a few things. And, and one of the cool thing that it does is key phrase extraction, which was used quite heavily on uh, to pick up the right message, uh, as well as topic modeling, which again, we use to uh, pick up if the candidate is, is talking about uh, if they're applying for a data engineering role and are they actually uh, are using the right keywords or the right um, the right phrases or as well as the right answers uh, to those particular questions. So uh, matching that to a corpus of text and, and, and matching it to a particular topic. And um, a few downsides to this, it, is, it takes, does take some time to train and you do need a minimum of 10 documents per training class, which kind of makes sense because you know, it is a deep learning uh, in the back end. So you do need a lot of data uh, for this to work uh, as expected. And like I said, uh, Kinesis, we use it for streaming uh, Twitter messages, but there is a bit of a buffer on the end. So um, if you want actual live messages, then Kinesis Firehose is not uh, the best way to go. Um, just for the fact where there's a bit of a, a memory, uh, a storage buffer, as well as or a time buffer to it, um, to, in order for it to deliver to S3. Uh, we, the resume summarizer is essentially a, a lambda that makes a call um, to Tesseract and, and and comprehend. So it converts a document to text. That's the first thing it does. If you use something like Tesseract before, it's a very similar service, and uh, it has very high level of accuracy. And, and again, um, one of the downsides to this is is of course, because it's easy to implement, the downside is it, it does get costly if you're having multiple scans. So if you're a big company, you know, 200, 300 uh, scans or thousands of scans, and you might want to evaluate the cost. Uh, the other thing that uh, came across when I was using this as well is AWS uh, may take some of the documents and information and use it as well. So you may want to be careful because some of the resume and things are a bit confidential. So, uh, but you can give AWS a message going, hey, look, can you delete these information? And I'm, I'm sure they'll be able to assist you out with that one as well. And, and lastly, uh, uh, the automatic video interview, uh, the analysis, which in this case, the candidates um, records their video, which uploads in S3. And then again, there's an event trigger on that, which goes ahead and call comprehend, uh, does some topic modeling stuff, and then um, using transcribe beforehand to convert the video into text. And the thing is about transcribe is uh, it allows you to use custom vocabulary as well. So useful for picking up uh, slangs or so Australian slangs or IT slangs those are quite useful. Um, and then the other stuff as well, it can detect multiple speakers. So uh, this can be built on top of when you're doing an interview to interviewee discussion, you can detect who's the interviewer um, talking and who's the interviewee um, answering. So things like that. And at that time, only MP4, was the only video format that was allowed. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is still the case, but if someone knows there are other formats that can be used, that do let me know. Um, but at that time, it was MP4 was the only video format, which was a little bit of a limitation, but we had MP4, so it was good anyway. <laughs> and I'll pass it back to Perk now. Awesome, yeah, so now we understand how it works behind the scene. And then we can see that recruitment is actually automated a lot of uh, stages in the traditional recruitment process, which actually four of them. And now let's talk about the key takeaways that we got from building this solution. 
So the first one is that we are using different AWS machine learning service and we found that they are very powerful and because of they are serverless, so anyone can just use it as the API endpoint. And the next one is we keep track. Uh, you should be keeping track of your active resources because uh, the AWS machine learning service, uh, it depends on how much you use it, how much you consume it, so it could be costly. And the next one is that before you start coding, which is the coding is the most, uh, the most part that you spend a lot of time on. Therefore, you should be planning and wireframing carefully, which will save you a lot of time in the long run. And the last part is that try to learn and make a lot of mistakes, especially from this kind of hackathon event. And also from when, from st when you are start building the POC as well, because then it will save you a lot of time when you start uh, building the actual product. And yes, so you are uh, in the AWS community there. So you can follow Gino and I on LinkedIn and Medium as well. And thank you so much for today. Thank you guys for listening in.